Hello and welcome to a new video. Back in 2014, Ebb Software, wanting to pitch their game to potential publishers, created a demo in order to give people an idea of what the game will be like. The responses to a demo were generally positive. It played well, but it was just too weird for mainstream audiences. Unfortunately, we may never get to play that demo. In all likelihood, the files might not even exist anymore, totally deleted. But in a last-ditch effort at the time, they recorded some footage from it and made a trailer for their Kickstarter campaign in 2014. The Kickstarter campaign failed, but the trailer remains. And now with the prologue released, we can see it's in the same area. But just because it's in the same area doesn't mean everything's the same. Certainly some changes, both large and small, have been made, and I'm going to go through them today. But before we get into that, I'd like to share a word from today's video's sponsor. Yeah, I don't have a sponsor. Anyways, on to the analysis. The 2014 trailer opens up with this spinning, panning shot of this butthole-looking structure. Notice how it has some slight animation to it. It's not a static object, but something that actually appears to be both organic and alive. We understand now that these are the structures used to hold mold pods that mold people are stored in. They can be moved around the facility, or just left there on the wall to be used later. While visually different in the sense that there's less brown on them, the biggest change is lack of animation in the final product. Next, in a rather dark room, we get a panning shot of a device known as machine execution, and the camera slowly zooms into a hole in the ground. Sure enough, the same room is in the prologue, and we even have the benefit of seeing some of the unfortunate victims or would-be victims of the machine. Various mold people still in their sacks, left there yet to be scooped out, as if something cataclysmic and sudden happened that required everyone to stop what they're doing and abandon the area. But the biggest difference, I think, between the two builds is the lighting. Where the 2014 trailer takes place in a rather dark room, in the prologue, there's plenty of visibility to be had. The next shot is an on-the-rails one showing, surprise, surprise, some rails. You can see some strange machines on the left called mold machines. Notice how here and in the prologue, there is a difference between both the size of the room and how the ground is laid out. The pre-alpha looks to be much more restricted in where you can move, where here you can walk around freely. We don't know what the mold machines do, just that mold people are stuffed in them and something happens. But I don't think you have to think too hard about this in order to guess that it's probably needlessly and pointlessly cruel to these unfortunate victims, this mass slaughter of mold people. Now this is an interesting shot because this structure here does not exist in the final build. We don't know what it would have been used for, if anything at all. It's lined with very thick, meaty, red flesh. The kind of flesh that does not seem to be present in the final build either. The 2014 trailer finally opens up a bit more with a better shot of a room, before focusing on this crane structure. You may notice how a lot of the structures in the trailer have this sort of white webbing mass that seems to be gluing things to the surface. You may also notice how, in this shot here, you can see some more red flesh on the wall. The crane does appear in the final build. It's used to put Mold Man in the cart, in order to be wheeled away to his fate. Rather than just one claw, it now has two. But other than that, and some difference in coloration, structurally it looks very similar to the pre-alpha version. 
In the center of the room is a structure called the Command Center, a towering piece of architecture with a spiral ramp leading up to this bony surface. It looks to be made of webbing and wiring, with a single console for the player to use in order to manipulate the environment. It appears somewhat similar in the prologue, though it seemed to have abandoned the bony protrusions in favor of something more mechanical looking. And that is a common thing with the differences between builds in general. It's less bio, more mechanical. With a name like the Command Center, I thought it would have a much larger role that would be used to operate the multitudes of machinery in the room, but instead it's used strictly for changing where the tracks lead to. In fact, in the newer build in general, there seems to be far less usable machinery in this circular room than what looked to be in the 2014 build. Of course, not having access to that build, it's genuinely impossible to say. There's a panning shot of a hallway, but it's just genuinely kind of impossible to tell where exactly this is. One issue with comparing the two builds is we don't even know if the hallways and pathways between them have remained the same. Given the fact that the new version was built from the ground up, a lot could have changed. In fact, we'll see later that there are rooms in the 2014 build that straight up don't seem to exist in the current build. The trailer certainly loves its panning shots because we get another one, this time a top-down view. True to Scorn's osha -less universe, there's no railings to be found. You'll notice there's also only one console, the other probably having fallen off at some point. We then get another shot of the command center and bottom of the bridge. Notice a rather distinct spire pointing toward the command center, and how the room is shaped. In the final build, the room is far less enclosed. There's no lighting on the ceiling, instead natural light flows within. You also get a difference in color scheme. Rather than a lot of browns with a little bit of yellow and even less greens, the room is almost flooded with green. There's no spire on the bottom of the bridge. There is a haphazard wiring that exists in the original version, but the spire is completely lacking, and that always seemed like a really weird change to me. Something seemingly so arbitrary. But perhaps one of the most noticeable difference is the roofing, where the original seems to be an enclosed area, thus necessitating lights, the newer build is open air. Natural light comes in. In the original build, the area looked old and dilapidated, but here it looks especially in ruin due to that fact. The wear and tear, the erosion that might come with differences in temperature, or rain, or whatever else happens on Scorn's world, is going to do a further number in the area, than if it was just an enclosed place. There's a blink and you'll miss it shot of the character looking down at his own body. Seriously, even when slowing this down, I have to copy and paste the same clip over and over again. He has thinner arms, thicker lungs, and hard plating. I actually prefer the newer version, the current build Scorn Guy. He looks almost identical to how he did in the 2017 build even, maybe a bit higher fidelity and he doesn't have the gashes due to the parasite on him, and perhaps the biggest structural difference, he has a much more prominent crotch than he did in 2017. This is going to be a disaster for the fan art side of the game. Another very quick shot, a panning scene showing a hallway with some hooks lining the sides and some scooping mechanisms on the floor. This is very interesting because this room does not appear in the prologue. It looks to be a storage area for spare parts, 
And maybe it's behind one of the locked doors in the prologue, but as far as I can tell, it doesn't seem to exist there. Even seemingly fundamental aspects of the game and its world seem to have been changed. This shot here seems to imply that inserting that weird key is what causes Scorn Guy to be able to control this crane. In fact, notice how he doesn't have anything on his left hand. Now of course we know in order to use any of the consoles, he needs a wrist key, and it is embedded in his left hand. He's rather useless without the device, unable to operate many of the machinery. And so, as seems to be the case quite often when comparing these two builds, the developers decided to up the cruelty to make things far more painful, to add far more misery to the world of Scorn. And given that our character seems to die at the end of the prologue, we're probably going to have to go through this with a different Scorn guy too. I predicted that this was one of the earliest rooms that you would go to in the game, and sure enough, it is indeed one of the earliest rooms you go to in the game. So I was right about that. A rather rarity when talking about this game. We get more panning shots, this time of a rather enclosed rocky tunnel. In fact, this shot appears twice in the trailer. I actually think I know where this is. This might actually be the same hallway in the prologue that you go through right before you enter the room where you get the wrist key. It's just as rocky and enclosed, but now with some additional mineshaft-like structures. Rehashing old territory, we get another shot of the spare parts room and another shot of Scorn Guy using that key thing. What's most peculiar to me is the use of vibrant red lighting in the pre-alpha. Outside of Scorn Guy and Mold Man's blood, we don't see distinct reds in the prologue. They're all very muted, if even present at all. There is certainly no harsh red light illuminating areas, which is a bit of a shame because I thought it was pretty cool. There's a shot of the bridge area again, with the exit looking a bit like the Assassin's Creed logo. In the prologue, the exit to that area is much more wide open. The next shot is of this asset called the Jacuzzi. No, that's actually what it's called according to the guy who modeled it. And what's kind of weird is that even though it doesn't seem to appear in the final build, some concept art of it has been Ebb Software's YouTube icon since 2014. Like, you can see the banner is one of the newer concept arts, but they have not updated that icon, even though they've updated their uh, profile icons for other accounts. It seems even a bit peculiar they would have chosen that one in 2014. Like, why that of all the concept arts you had available? I actually really want to know this. Another interesting distinction is there's the pistol in the 2014 build. It's very low resolution and low poly, but it is, without a doubt, that gun. In fact, in a short documentary about Ebb Software, there's one brief clip showing what looks to be the first time Scorn Guy does get the pistol, and it's certainly not in the pre-alpha area. The only weapon we do get isn't even supposed to be used as a weapon in the game's world. It's a humble tool of trade. Some piston mechanism used to operate different machinery. More similar to the wrist key than the gun. In fact, as far as I can tell, this entire upper area here just does not appear in the 2014 trailer. The masses of dead mold people are conspicuously absent from it, almost as if the initial build didn't have this room in it. Though, to be fair, we have seen in the differences between the two trailers that it does seem like more bodies were added. This giant heart mechanism, on the other hand, 
While it does not appear in the 2014 trailer, there is concept art from that time showing it off. Notice how it's in an upright position. This area here doesn't seem to be in the final build. There's like a cart hung up by some weird black goop on the ceiling before the shot continues on. And then the final thing we see is Mold Man being taken to the machine execution. Now, everyone loves Mold Man, and if you don't, fuck off. But interestingly, he has also gone through some changes. You can see the color scheme is a lot more gray and brown in the early build. He also looks completely ingrained into the mold pod. Whereas in the more current build, he does have some more distinction from it. Yeah, some parts of his body looks to be melted into the mold pod, but it does look like he can be his own distinct form. Additionally, he doesn't look quite as moldy. He has the same flesh tone as Scorn Guy, a healthier appearance for a deformed little scrimblo. And unlike in the trailer, we get to see him walk around outside of his mold shell. He has an actual role in the game, albeit a small one. He exists just to help open a door as far as we can tell. I found in the newer build, he has a bit of a deeper, less raspy voice than compared to the 2014 build. But of course, that's just one of many changes that have occurred over the course of development. It is nice to get some more context about the room. Certainly cool to actually be playing in it, even if it does look very different in many regards. Though part of me will always wonder, what was the original demo like? What were some of the changes that were made that we don't know about? Are some of the rooms and stuff that we saw in the 2014 trailer somewhere still in the final build? Locked away behind a particular door to be accessed later? And if so, why would those be present in the 2014 trailer when presumably it would have played fairly similarly to the current one? Some assets like the buzzsaw used to free Mold Man, or the machine execution used to kill Mold Man, or the cart used to transport Mold Man have carried over into the final build, albeit changed significantly in appearance. But other things shown off in the trailer, like the hammer, like these weird door things, or even the jacuzzi, the thing that's Ebb Software's profile picture on YouTube, are just completely absent, not just changed visually, they don't seem to be there at all. And then there's the fleshy exhaust. This was made in 2014 with the original build but it's neither in the 2014 trailer, and it doesn't seem to be anywhere in the prologue area in the final build. It's likely still in the game, but what's the context? Why did they make it? Where is it located? And what's its relation to the Mold Man area? And if that's not enough, what about the 2016 to 2017 build of the game? What was the prologue like? In that version, what did things look like then? Because there's differences between that and the current build. Really, what did Mold Man or the Command Center or the Buzzsaw look like? Amusingly, we do know what the fleshy exhaust looks like from that era, but we really don't know what anything else looks like from it in relation to the prologue. There's so much lost Scorn history, and if the game doesn't suck, in fact, if it ends up being really good, I think that people who analyze a game and make videos on it and pick apart its history, who aren't me, are going to be just as upset that we may never find out the answers to these most pressing questions. That's kind of the nature of this stuff, though. You never know what's going to be big. During the production of Alien, there were tons of, 
you know, behind the scenes videos and pictures and props kept over, but they didn't know that movie would become one of the most iconic films of all time, so all of that archiving could have been wasted. Similarly, a lot of stuff ends up becoming big, but we have almost no history to show for it. It's a bit of a gamble. Do you save all the files and previous builds in the off chance that something does become iconic and people want to see the progress leading up to its final form? Or do you not waste that kind of time in the assumption that maybe your game will be well received, but won't be well received enough that people desperately want to see how it was made before the final build? Again, we may never get the answers to these questions, but I am glad we do have some clarity between the builds now that the prologue area has firmly shown that the 2014 area is indeed in the final game. Maybe there's more to discover yet about Scorn and its history, but until then, I hope you enjoyed the video, that I gave you something to think about and otherwise entertained you. Take care.